Europe's castles. On the trail of the European aristocracy, we investigate France's Loire Valley, Germany's Baden-Württemberg, the south of England, Italy's Piedmont, and the castles around Lisbon in Portugal. The enchanting Palacio de Pena, a royal retreat and place of magical childhood adventures. Tega salt fields, the last vestiges of a dying tradition. Kings once paid soldiers with this white gold. Mafra monastery and palace, the power of knowledge is still revered here. The Castle Way in Stremadura. It leads from Palacio de Pena, the fairy tale castle in the Sintra Mountains, over the monastic palace in Mafra, to Palacio de Queluche near Lisbon. The stony gaze of Cristure looks down upon the heart of the coastal province of Stremadura. Lisbon, sovereign of the Tagus region, once a royal seat and capital of half the globe. The regents only left its banks in search of cooler climes. Heading for the Sintra Mountains, a royal summer retreat for the last 800 years. Perched on the crown of Sintra mountain range for 170 years, Palacio de Pena, Portugal's Neuschwanstein Castle, a magical blend of German romanticism and countless architectural styles built on the ruins of a medieval monastery. The belfry is not the only place where time has stood still. The palace provided King Don Fernando II with a refuge far from reality. For the young Joaquim Diogo, it was an enchanted adventure playground. From a young age, the castle custodian's son explored the fairy tale palace, playing in the cloisters of the monastery ruins. I fiquei muito curioso e queria todos os momentos e ver cada sala por si, porque cada uma sala despertava curiosidade mais. Tudo isso me impressionava, de maneira diferente que não é o que nós usamos em casa, não é? A pacifist at heart, more an artist than a king, Fernando II from the House of Cobergota loved painting. He would retreat to his palace studio and devote himself to his nymphs. Diogo also set his eyes upon this room as a small boy. Não me senti bem quando estava com o meu pai, com a presença dele, para ver as mulheres nuas. Senti-me muito, muito envergonhado mesmo. Mas tive curiosidade em depois sozinho ir eu ver. Each room housed its own collection of curiosities. Like in the Sala Verde, French furniture made out of feather-light paper mache, adorned with mother of pearl inlays. His father let him in on the castle's secrets, 
and showed him invisible doors hidden in walls and elaborate secret drawers in the king's bureau. The flamboyant Palace of Sorrow Sintra's tourist magnet. As he played around the palace, little Joachim made the most of it all. Gostava muito de fazer as minhas partidas aos adultos e aos visitantes que passeavam por este palácio. Desde esconder-me atrás dos cortinados e pegar sustos, esconder-me debaixo das mesas. Tudo o que era de malandrice eu gostava muito de, de fazer e ainda hoje gosto. But his mischief did not always go unatoned. He even played pranks on the castle guards, sticking down their shoes with glue. The Palacio de Pena then also briefly became a palace of sorrow for Joaquim. Sintra's coastline, the Cabo de Roca, marks Europe's most westerly point. The Cape rises 165 meters above the Atlantic Ocean. Perched on its mound, a 240-year-old lighthouse. Located on the coast of Cularish, Portugal's smallest wine-growing region, cultivated under the auspices of Portuguese kings for over 800 years, Europe's oldest grape variety grows here in sand dunes. The Ramishku grape, dating back to the 18th century. Fifteen wine-growers look after this ancient vine. The wine is harvested on a single day. The sun and the sea scorch everything that grows on the dunes, apart from grapes and apples. This rare grape has been protected in the same way for centuries, by barriers of woven reed to stave off the salty ocean winds. Nature helped protect the grape in 1865, the bleakest year in wine-growing history. A phylloxera epidemic from America ravaged through Europe's vineyards. The sand dunes of Kularish kept the destructive pest at bay. As did the astounding depth of the vine's roots winding down as far as eight meters. The Ramishku grape from Kularish is as authentic as ever, ungrafted and unfiltered, just as it was 200 years ago. Rediscovered and cultivated by father and son from the Baitash family. In their adega, or wine cellar dating back to 1808. They bottle this rare delicacy. Inheriting the legacy helped them discover the joys of wine late on in life. Um vinho muito estranho. À primeira vista não gostei, mas depois de Está no copo durante algum tempo. Voltei a provar e ele já me agradou mais. Their treasure, 30,000 bottles of wine, from 1931 to 1965. The secret of Ramishku, a lengthy aging process. One year in oak barrels, five years in tropical wood barrels, and 18 months in the bottle. 
Only then is the wine ready to be enjoyed. É a pérola da casa porque é um é um mimo esta adega é um mimo. Sempre que nós fazemos uma festa de família em casa, nós abrimos o ramisco de 30, 1934 à hora do almoço e bebemos-lo ao lanche. It is called the most French of the Portuguese wines. Rumor has it that the king even had the vines imported. It soon became a feature of court life across the globe, sold to Brazil, Africa and India. Today, this rare wine is a luxury only known to real connoisseurs. Na realidade, não é com o ramisco que nós conseguimos ganhar algum dinheiro. Mas enquanto tivermos possibilidades de manter o ramisco, para nós é um prazer muito grande vender ramisco e, e dar a conhecer a muitas pessoas a qualidade do ramisco. A little further inland, the Palacio Nacional de Mafra, 1,200 rooms, 5,200 doors, 2,500 windows, and 154 grand staircases bear testament to royal megalomania. King Joao V spared no expense on the monastic palace. Monks cleverly persuaded the king to build the complex by promising him the heir to the throne he so longed for. All they requested in return was the construction of a monastery. The king was overjoyed. Even when it only turned out to be a girl, 45,000 workers, 7,000 soldiers, and Brazilian gold helped create a grand display of royal power to honor the king and the Franciscan monks. What was planned as a friary for 13 Capuchin friars turned into a monastery for 330 monks. With a treasure trove of knowledge, this lady is its guardian, Teresa Amaral. Her kingdom boasts 40,000 books from across the globe. Knowledge amassed over more than 1,600 years. I sempre tive como objetivo de vida vir trabalhar para esta biblioteca, portanto, acabei por realizar esse mesmo sonho. Leio durante todo o dia nesta biblioteca e em casa continuo a ler à noite. Tenho sempre muitos livros na mesa de cabeceira. Precious items bound in leather and cork, from science to religion, astronomy to physics. Unique first editions of works by Horace, Caesar, and Cicero. Teresa Amaral is fond of one book in particular. Dating back to 1583, when fleets of Portuguese ships set out to discover the world. Its sea monsters and magical creatures depict a mythical and unfamiliar universe. The Atlas by Abraham Ortelius.
Eu sou uma sonhadora, vivo nesse tal mundo da lua e navego e a biblioteca acaba por ser um local ótimo onde eu posso fazer essa navegação em termos de, de pensamento. Water and a brush are all that is needed to remove the perpetual dust. The wooden shelves regulate humidity levels. With just a light breath and a flick of the hand, Teresa brings new life to old, stiff books every two months. Um livro, um amigo, algo que, que me pode acompanhar nos momentos alegres, outros nos momentos mais tristes. É sempre algo que eu protejo porque é realmente um amigo. Night time sees a changing of the guard. For centuries, bats have slipped in through the windows. The monks used to breed colonies for this very purpose. Bats keep the library and the books insect free. tenho problemas de coexistir com os morcegos. Eles desenvolvem o papel deles. Gosto que eles aqui estejam e são nossos amigos. E gostamos os dois uh, deste mesmo espaço. Eu durante o dia, eles à noite. The Basilica of Mafra. Its two towers house 104 bronze bells from Antwerp. The world's largest carillon collection in both towers. One for the minutes, one for the hours. The vast palace attic below used to be a home to servants and monks. He liked to play above the basilica as a child and watch his father while he worked as the palace's official bell ringer. Francisco Gato, aircraft captain and himself a passionate caroloneur a passion that for a long time seemed an unattainable dream. Meu pai não deixava de qualquer ilhão. Eu sentava-me ao lado dele naquele banco, não é? E quando eu ia lá tentar, para me deixar nas teclas, dava-me uma sapatada com o meu pai. Não deixava de qualquer porque é natural. Ouvia-se cá fora, não é? It can still be found in the Sala dos Donatos where Minions once took care of chimes and clocks. His father's organ, discarded and left to languish. It was once connected to the bells by pole wires and tilt levers. Music to mark the minutes once rang out from the North Tower. The mechanical organ barrel, which once teased out different melodies from the songbirds of Mafra. A magnificent Baroque masterpiece, just waiting to be brought to life. As it was for the palace's inauguration in 1730. <laughs> He used to press imaginary keys on his school desk. As a bell ringer, he has composed over 60 pieces, mainly of classical music. His feet and fists hit the notes, setting in motion 217 tons of bronze. 
in each of the towers. Eu com tudo que ocorre lá em cima, na torre, esquece-me tudo. Se eu, por exemplo, estou doente, deixo de estar doente, porque tudo que ocorre lá em cima e acabou. Francisco Gato dedicated one piece to his fellow citizens of Mafra and to his love of King João V's unrivaled Carolon. But bell ringing is not without its dangers. For centuries, badly cast bells and dissonant tones have driven tortured bell ringers to leap to their deaths. Se tiraram da torre abaixo, este é o contrário. Faz as pessoas vir cá acima. Portanto, tem um carrilhão pesado, mas muito mavioso. Lisbon's port of Rostelo. Overnight, the entire Portuguese nobility fled to Brazil from here in 1806 to escape Napoleon. Visible for miles, Cristore. He has guarded over Lisbon since 1959. The port of Kazilias. Anchored in the dry dock is the last pride and joy of a pacifist king. The frigate Dom Fernando II e Gloria. Portugal's last major warship. It sailed along the India route to Goa, the legendary seaway discovered by Vasco da Gama. Built from teak in a shipyard in Duman, a former Portuguese colony in India. The Navy is still in command here today. Its captain, José Antonio de Oliveira Rocha e Abreu. I like the Fragata in its whole. In fact, I can say that this é talvez uma das grandes paixões uh, da minha vida, porque sinto a fragata um pouco também como minha. It was one of the most formidable warships of its time, equipped with 50 cannons. Over 33 years, it sailed more than 100,000 miles, the equivalent of five voyages around the world. The heyday of the frigate then came to an end. In 1963, a fire sealed its demise. For decades, its wreck languished in the Tagus River until the decision was made to restore it to its former glory. <laughs> The ship's crew numbered 145. It could accommodate up to 600 passengers. The journey from Lisbon to Goa took three months, without stopovers. Planks were a glistening deep red to conceal the blood of the wounded. Yet the warship never went into battle. The frigate is also part of Captain José Antonio's biography. It has been linked to his family 
since the days of the monarchy. His grandfather's papers and ring, adorned with the royal colors, shaped his outlook on life. De facto, meu avô era um monárquico perfeitamente assumido, que lutou pela restauração da monarquia em Portugal. Tornei-me monárquico. Tem muito de emoção, tem muito de sentimento, mas tem, também tem muito de racional. The glory of the last royal frigate. A story that José Antonio loves to pass on to both young and old. His ship will never sail again, but this does not dampen his joy, as long as he can serve on the royal frigate. Sem ser dúvida que tenho, tenho muito orgulho. Por vezes as pessoas ficam muito saturadas por permanecerem muito tempo no sítio onde se encontram. Neste caso, não. Pontuin Cinco de Abril. It stretches 3.2 km over the Tagus River. Aquaduto das Águas Livras. It survived Lisbon's 1755 earthquake unscathed. As did the Palacio dos Marqueses de Fronteira, an estate built in Portuguese Renaissance style. It is the residence of the 11th Marquês de Fronteira. In the battle room, glazed tiles depict Portugal's conflicts against Spain. A poetic masterpiece rules in the garden, with a leafy maze, allegorical statues, and whimsical tile panels. The azulejos are like mirrors, depicting women amid groups of men at leisure, as well as masked women gambling. First a hunting lodge, then a pleasure palace. The house and garden have been his family's main residence since the great earthquake. Eu sou pouco frequentador do jardim e cada vez tenho mais dificuldade de mobilidade, menos mobilidade e, portanto, já há anos que não vou até ao jardim. This view shatters the magic of bygone days. For 300 years, this gem has been situated at the gates of the city. Now the capital is edging ever closer, threatening this tranquil paradise. Time is the master here. Its cycles determine the garden's appearance and patina. Statues crack and crumble as nature takes its course. The new is adapted to blend in with the old, like these columns covered in colorful lichens. They are even cultivated using yogurt and sugared water. Eu costumo dizer que a luta contra o tempo é uma luta à partida que nós já sabemos que está perdida. O que se pode é reduzir a velocidade de passagem do tempo. The Casa do Fresco, or Cold Storage House, is home to another secret. Embedded between shells and glass, a resplendent porcelain china set used by the king himself to mark the palace inauguration. 
and this noble family's allegiance to the crown, going back many centuries. His fate was predestined from the day he was born, both outside and inside these walls, a legacy which can be difficult to escape. Eu sentia o peso dessa tradição e do que essa tradição pedia. Sei que sou prisioneiro disso de alguma maneira, mas não sinto isso como uma prisão, porque assumi isso e com isso passou a fazer parte da minha vida. The Marquis stumbled upon his very own niche, a pursuit which also honors the memory of his mother. They both share the same passion, a love of jewelry. O que é que fascina? Eu sei lá, o brilho, possivelmente. É que eu toda a vida achei que não tinha imaginação. E de repente descubro-me a fazer colares. E é uma coisa que me surpreende, que me apareceu completamente surpresa. Pont Vasco da Gama, the longest bridge in Europe. It spans 17 kilometers across the Tagus Delta. The other side of the river is home to green pastures and black bulls, and an ancient royal tradition, bullfighting. The first arena was built for a princess in Lisbon in 1451 to celebrate her marriage. Designed to stage bullfights with spears, this evolved into the Portuguese torada, still practiced today in the arena of Alcochet. She is Portugal's first female bullfighter. Sonia Matias. Eu desde muito pequenina tudo me apaixonou, o toiro, o cavalo, os trajes, a música, o público, foi um um leque de coisas que me fez apaixonar por esta profissão. Bullfighting was once a pursuit reserved for kings and nobles, illustrated by these extravagant costumes gold embroidered silk and velvet jackets with tricorn and feather, reminiscent of the style of Louis XV. Neither an aristocrat nor a man, she broke away from this tradition and had the trousers transformed into culottes. The idea of transforming this in a more feminine surgiu uh, numa questão por que não? Porque não tinha lógica nenhuma continuar a ser tão feminina, tão vaidosa e vestir um fato que foi único e exclusivamente feito para homens. She has firmly established herself in the male dominated world of bullfighting. For many women in Portugal, she symbolizes the fact that anything is possible. The arena is no place for making friends. The goal here is to gain respect and recognition. 
It is a contest, now also between the sexes. Inicialmente não, não me viram de muito agrado, não só pelo facto de acharem que eu poderia tornar uma competição que os desfavorecia pelo facto de ser mulher. E realmente aconteceu muitas vezes as coisas correrem melhor a mim inicialmente e eles ficavam muito aborrecidos por esse fator. Killing bulls has been banned since the 18th century. In the arena, the horseback battle in this sandy ring is not a trial of strength. It aims to showcase elegance, skill, and courage. Para mim, o toreio é uma arte. Uh... E tudo o que eu faço, não vou dizer que é indolor, mas tenho consciência que é muito menos do que, que as pessoas aparentam. Por isso, não vou dizer que tenho pena. Tenho um grande respeito, sim, um grande respeito uh, e, e admiração. Bullfighting, originally a royal pursuit. For Sonia and her brother and sister, it is part of Portuguese culture to this day. The town of Alcochete. A statue honors the men from the nearby salt fields. Flamingos from the Camargue. They come here to rest each spring and autumn and find nourishment in the Salinas. The salt basins glimmer a rusty red, replenished for centuries by the waters of the Tagus Delta. This man is one of Alcochet's last salineros. Signor Manuel, a salt maker. Acho tudo diferente. Eu desde que chego à salina, parece que a minha vida é outra. Com o sal, tenho que ter paciência, mas nem sempre é a mesma coisa. Um dia uma coisa, outro dia outra. E com os povos também tem que haver um bocadinho de paciência para eles nos aturar a nós e nós a ela. He used to cook every day. His speciality, caldeirada, a fish soup seasoned with salt from his own salina. Because here in Stramadura, it is the men who cook. Portugal's rulers also recognize the value of this salt. They used the revenue to pay Dutch mercenaries to defend themselves against Spain. Another dying tradition Salt breads, shapes sculpted with fresh water and sea salt, gifts from the salineros to their masters. Chamava o ouro branco porque o sal nunca chegava para todos. E houve grandes fortunas feitas com sal. Mesmo homens quaisquer vulgares, já não sei se é branco, se é ouro preto, mas já não é nada. 
Alcochet salt was once a much coveted commodity, at home and abroad. It was also used to dry bacalhau, a traditional fish speciality. In late summer, the basins are a glistening sea of white, brimming with pure salt. The dry salt plains are only flooded with seawater if rain is forecast, to stop the salt from dissolving. One of the finest moments for a salinero. The creation of the salt pyramid. But the working world has changed and the salt making tradition is slowly dying out. Estava habituado a andar nesta vida com muita gente e hoje não. Ninguém quer mesmo esta vida. Não ser algum como eu, já muito antigo e que seja como eu estou, não se encontra mais ninguém. Senhor Manuel knows that a miracle is needed. Or the salt fields will soon be consigned to history. Halfway between Lisbon and Sintra, the Palacio Nacional de Queluche Portugal's mini Versailles. The summer retreat was a second residence for the royal family. But the opulent and bright air of the Rococo Palace hides a dark past. Desperate screams once emanated from these majestic rooms. From Maria Primera, the first queen of Portugal. The strictly religious monarch gradually lost her mind. Her state was triggered by the murder of a noble family. She was forced to listen in the palace as they were quartered, beheaded, broken on the wheel and burned. In 1793, Portugal's ministers finally declared her to be mentally insane. Her son, Don João VI, became Prince Regent. This man is a sixth generation descendant of the Regent, Dr. Philippe Graciosa, the heart and soul of the Equestrian Academy. The historic stables of Kelouch Palace. 60 studs are being trained here in equestrian arts, saddled and bridled as they were in the 18th century. Each of the 15 riders comes here voluntarily driven by their great passion for horsemanship for three hours every day. Even the red velvet uniforms are based on designs from the Portuguese Royal Riding Academy's original handbook, the Equestrian Bible. Eu mantenho não é só por ser da nobreza primeiro porque gosto deste tipo de cavalo e deste tipo de equitação e depois porque os cavalos são uma raça nossa e por acaso são uma raça real porque eram os cavalos da família real. 
The Alta Real has existed for more than 260 years. It is a Lusitano breed, temperamental and skillful. Even the standard exercises are only performed in full dress. It is a privilege to belong to the Portuguese School of Equestrian Arts and a great source of pride. I think that, in my case, one is to be Portuguese. The other is to mount a cavalo de raça lusitana. We have Portuguese shells. We have a art Portuguese. Eu penso que em relação à escola é a nossa casa. É o nosso cartão de visita. As is the quadrille, a ballet featuring horses and riders. alguma alguma parte dessa época gosto muito da época barroca é que repara nós aqui não andamos mascarados a senhora chega aqui e tem a sensação que eu ando vestido normalmente the garden of Kailush a resplendent Rococo jewel, hedges stretching 110 kilometers, 500 chestnut and elm trees, and 300 pyramids made of boxwood and myrtle. This man has put his heart and soul into this botanical kingdom, head gardener, José Gadet. É possível nós perdermos emocionalmente no jardim. Sons de pássaros, a água. Uma coisa que enche a alma. E o coração uh, sente essa, essa forma de estar. Uh, gosto muito de estar no jardim, uh, de viver, de passar debaixo das árvores. Only seven gardeners tend to this opulent garden, year-round. These grounds were once the playground of the royal court. The garden was designed as a natural extension of the palace. With neat hedges, geometric spheres and pyramids, as a counterpart to government routine and court protocol. The Canal Douche Azulejos also sets off José Gardet's imagination. When the iron gates closed, it would fill up with water. Inner walls, lined with ornate tiles, depict the Portuguese love of exploration and recreation. Aristocrats would glide along this waterway, stretching 110 meters in small boats. In the evenings, torches, in the shape of golden cornucopia, would light up the canal. Jumping dolphins, monkeys with castanets, snakes spitting water, and dancing cherubs adorn the elaborate water garden. 27 works of art in Rococo style. 
imported from England. Sim, faz ensinar. E depois as próprias fontes, o uh, Neptune, a Nereide, uh, com as suas formas diferentes, cada uma, uh, de, de trabalhar, porque é aquilo que a nossa imaginação vai buscar, o, o que seria, como uh, os deuses. The lead fountains have been cleaned in the same way for 250 years by hand, with brushes and water. The most magnificent of them all is no exception, the fountain of Nereid, a mythical sea nymph. They remain loyal to old traditions when tending the garden and try to preserve the royal spirit. E se eu pudesse lá estar e se pudesse dar o meu contributo para quando a família real chegasse, poderem ir ao jardim e dizerem sim sí, senhor, isto é um bom trabalho e a pessoa sentir-se que efetivamente teria feito. <música>